Slowly you saw the migration of the Indian traders, looking at the opportunities, primarily of course being Dukawalas. Many of those people have become leaders over the years, politicians, uh, leaders of industry, and then entrepreneurs and so on. In this country, there were three levels of society. On top were, were the Europeans, in the middle were the Indians, and at the bottom were the Ugandan Africans. From the time I was a little child, I knew and had little Indian friends. Ugandans, they thought that they were poor because the Indian was, was the rich. Up till the 1970s, where Uganda was home for everyone, your sense of belonging was here. There was a sense of conflict of interest driven through saying that we need to now create the opportunity for the common men to flourish. What happened in 1972 was entirely Amin, and Amin was advised to get rid of the Asians. Amin was brutal, he was unkind. He dreamt and he wanted Asians to leave Uganda and that's when we realized that we are different people. This chaos took place, uh, people had to run, many families were split, some were made stateless. And here was a reality where you're faced now with all this hostile environment where you were nobody. And uh, it became very difficult for people to, to regain ground. I arrived at UK airport. The next morning, my sister-in-law takes me to the shops. She bought me a uniform. Then she took me to a supermarket. So she said she's asking for a job for me. So I said, job for me? I was shocked. It did not down on us that we are actually going to suffer. I had to make a living on my own. I looked for many jobs and did many jobs to survive. I wept and I said to myself, where do we begin? Everything was broken, shot. It was absolute chaos. So one of the things we did was to invite the Asians, those who can, to come back. And we knew that those Asians who accept to come, they would come with a wealth of experience, with the business acumen, but also with money to invest here. So we wanted them to come and revamp the economy, and they did. We had a very cushy life in, in London. And there, so there comes one evening to me and he says, look, I really want to go back to Uganda. I was a little shocked, but I said, all right, let's try our luck. I came back in 1985. The country was at war within the town, thinking of how we can fit in with the, with the community here. There was nothing. There were no shops, no supermarket. We started with, with a retail outlet of shop where we were trading in uh, sold. 1990, the government was gonna formalize the foreign exchange transactions. We opened the first forex bureau in the country. Sudhir, I could say, is a case from rags to riches. He can inspire you. The Forbes Sudhir, I've known him, but I've also known Sudhir when he was just beginning. His riches have a trickle-down effect up to the last grassroot person. His contribution to Uganda is immense because he is providing employment for thousands of Ugandans. The Indians have definitely contributed to the growth of Uganda. They are definitely important because they have been in this business for a long time. And they are teaching other Ugandans. The taxes they are paying, which taxes are building roads, hospitals, schools, they are, they are contributing a great deal.
they have not been allowed to establish their plantation because the my people say they will take away our land. They have been in Jinja for over a, for a hundred years. Not one inch, square inch has been taken to India. On the other hand, they have provided employment, they have provided social services, schools, hospitals. Yes, I was scared because I, I thought, what if this happens to us again? What if we have to leave the country again? Then I just sat down and said, no, this is it. Support Sudhir and grow here. I am third generation in this country. My son is the fourth generation. And this is our home. 